Making a pair of harp earrings is a great way to learn the basics of soutache embroidery. You're going to need some basic tools. I recommend having two pair of pliers so that you can hold your object with one hand and twist with the other. You're also going to need a pair of flush cutters or some other way of cutting your head pins. And you're going to need a pair of looping pliers. These are kind of fancy, but I really like them because all my loops come out exactly the same size. You can also use rosary pliers. You'll need some good scissors. They don't have to be huge, but they do need to be sharp, particularly at the tips. This is a very handy thing to have. It's really a darning needle. It's just a very large, oversized needle, and you can use it to push things around with. And of course, you're going to need a beading needle. I recommend a size 12 beading needle. You can use a 10, but a 10 won't usually take you through a size 15 bead. You're going to need thread. I like Nymo thread, size B. You'll need a washable fabric glue. I like Crafter's Pick, but there are many available. You will need three 24 inch lengths of soutache, your choice of colors, and an approximately two and a half inch by two and a half inch square of ultra suede. And last but not least, you're going to need beads. You're going to need two 6 millimeter beads, mine are faceted, four 4 millimeter beads, 16 to 20 size 6 seed beads, four 4 millimeter to 5 millimeter beads or pearls, I'm using freshwater pearls, about a half teaspoonful of size 11 seed beads, a few size 15 seed beads, four contrast beads, two focal beads, two size six beads, four six millimeter soldered jump rings, two head pins, I'm using 23 gauge but you can go larger, and a pair of ear wires. You'll begin by cutting all three lengths of soutache in half. Keep half on your work surface and put the other half aside to be used for the second earring. Thread your needle and make a double knot at the end of the thread. Trim it closely. You always want to make sure this is done first because once you pick up your soutache, you'll be holding it all in one hand and it's hard to put it down to knot the thread. Lay all three pieces of soutache out flat. You want to be sure that the braid is all pointed in the same direction. If you look carefully, the weave will make a V. If you flip it over, the V points in one direction. If you flip it over again, it points in the opposite direction. You want all the V's pointing in the same direction. Stack them up, one on top of the other, being careful not to let them flip over. And you're laying flat side to flat side. You're sort of making a soutache sandwich. Hold this by the edges, not by the top and bottom, not by the top piece and the bottom piece, but by the edges. That's going to keep a nice stack. Using your threaded needle, Push the needle up through the bottom of the stack of soutache. Where all of those V's align, there's an inverted rib running right down the center of each piece of soutache. And when they're all aligned, stacked up properly, and the needle goes right through the middle rib, you'll feel just a nice smooth give as the needle runs through. There's very little resistance. You'll notice that I'm making larger stitches on the top of the stack and smaller stitches on the bottom of the stack.
This is because I'm going to begin to curve the soutache. You always want the long stitches on the outside of the curve and the short stitches on the inside of the curve. Pick up one 6 millimeter bead, one you want at the center. Thread through it and stitch up through the soutache pretty much back at the point that you started your stitching. Now going in the opposite direction, stitch through the outside of the soutache, through the hole in the bead, through the other side, and back through the sandwich of soutache. Take a couple of stitches here, back and forth, back and forth. To complete wrapping the bead, separate the two outer layers from the inner layer and pinch the inner layer tight around the center bead. Drive your needle through the outer layers and then through both inner layers, but stop there. You're going to bring the needle all the way through and then you're going to turn it around and you're going to stitch just those two layers again. This is a real trick in soutache embroidery is not forcing closures to happen too quickly. A lot of people want to just run the thread through all six layers at one time. You never get a nice smooth close that way. You end up with a sort of a real big gap. You want to avoid that. So always do the middle layers first. Then you can send your needle through the two outer layers. Turn it around. You see I flip my work over quite a bit. And now you're going to send it back through all six layers. Turning the work over enables you to move from the side that you're the most comfortable. I'm right-handed, so I always want to be pushing my needle from right to left. I don't necessarily want to lift my arm over and be trying to uh, run it from top to bottom or left to right. That's a nice tight close. Next I'm going to make another curve. So I've separated the soutache in the middle, taken the three layers, and now my outside is my inside. The dark blue becomes the inside of my curve. I pick up a size 4 millimeter bead and run it up through all three layers of soutache. I'm actively curving the soutache and holding it curved and held in a curve each time I'm stitching and I want my stitches to shape the soutache. It's not so much about anchoring it. You're not pulling everything real tight. You're shaping it. It's sort of like soft sculpture. Here I'm taking another stitch. Now I'm going to add some of the size 6 seed beads. I pick up one. My thread is coming out of the inside of the curve from the outer layer. And I stitch through the three layers that are closest to the center bead and I let the needle slide out between the closest piece of soutache to the center bead and the center bead itself. So I've gone through six layers of soutache, three on the outside, the yellow bead, then three more layers of soutache, and the needle came out between the soutache and the bead. Now I'm driving the needle back up between the bead and the soutache, between the center bead and the soutache, picking up a yellow bead, going through the three outmost layers of soutache, and you can see I'm really driving through that rib. Take a look at the beads. They're actually fairly loose between the layers of soutache. It's a lot more important to keep the curve of the soutache consistent than it is to tighten it up to the individual beads. That's just not really important. 
everything is going to get glued down later. Don't pull things really, really tight. It's not necessary and it will ruin the look of the final product. Now I want to repeat on the other side. So in order to get back to the other side, I've gone up through the yellow bead, and now I'm going to go right back down through the same bead. I'm trying to create a path to get back up to the other side. And there's no set rule about where you stitch or how you stitch. It's really just all about hiding the stitches and hiding the thread. So I'm going to cut across by going through my center bead and coming out And I'm essentially looking to create the appropriate exit point for my thread. Where I start picking up the next bead is all dependent upon where that thread exits the work. So that's a good spot for me to pick up my red 4 millimeter bead. And now I'm going to create the same pattern around the other side. So first my red 4 millimeter bead. Keep the soutache nice and stacked. Curve it. Take a nice long stitch. Using that thread to coax the curve. And you see the thread really just buries itself right down inside that rib. It's really nice. It just essentially disappears. A yellow size 6 seed bead down through the three inner layers of soutache between the layers and the central bead. Back up through the inner layers. Pick up another size 6 yellow seed bead. Pull that up. There's a nice curve. One more. So now I have three yellow beads on each side. And I have to make a decision. I have to decide how many more beads I can fit in to close that circle. I have found that there always appears to be space for one more than there is actually room for. So I think I can fit two more beads onto that curve. So I'm going to add a fourth one to the side that I'm working on. And of course, I now need to add a fourth one to the other side. You'll find that depending on what you use for a center bead, or how many layers of soutache you're using, or what size beads you use to do the wrap, you may have an even number before you do the close, like we have today. Sometimes you have an odd number. If you have an odd number, you do one right in the middle and you actually stitch it to both sides evenly. So now I'm completing that wrap. I'm doing a close just like I did before with the center bead in that I've driven the needle through the two innermost layers of soutache and I'm stitching that closed first. Once again, you don't want to try to close all six layers together at the same time. Do the two center ones first, then connect the outer layers.
we're almost ready to add our two final decorative beads. After we do that, we're going to be trimming the soutache and stitching it down. So we need to decide which is the nicest side of the work. Usually, one side will have a little pull in the soutache. Something about it is just not quite as nice as the other side. Keep that in mind as you take these final steps. Just like we did at the other end, we're going to separate the soutache in half, curve half of it, and pick up our four or five millimeter bead. Checking your stack, making sure that all three pieces are aligned so that you're going down through the rib. You take that long stitch over the curve and a small stitch inside the curve. When I'm teaching classes, I call this respecting the curve. If you do it the other way around, you pull the soutache into kind of a D shape. You end up with your thread running through negative space. Now you're going to carefully pull the stack behind the work. So here's where we've made that decision about what's the front and what's the back. I'm going to run the needle up through the bottom stack and the top stack back and forth. And it doesn't really matter where the needle comes up. In this particular example, my needle is coming up through the pink piece of soutache. What does matter is that wherever the needle comes up, it needs to go right back down. Don't cross over colors. You'll get a pull that you can really see from the front. But if you stay going in and out of the same color, the thread buries itself in the fibers of the soutache. It's one of the nice things about this material. Now working from the back, I'm creating a series of whip stitches. I'm basically wrapping the loose ends of the soutache, making a little collar around the loose ends. And here's one of the only places where I start putting some real tension on my thread. What I'm doing is, is making a stop because as you can see, the soutache does fray on cut ends. So when I cut and trim my ends, and you notice I'm not getting too close to that wrapped thread, the stop, the wrapped thread, keeps the fray from working its way into the work. Now I pick up my needle and come back up through the soutache on the other side where I'm going to add the matching pink bead, freshwater pearl in my case, but you can use whatever you want. I have a, it's a, called a four to five millimeter freshwater pearl. And I like the organic look that they add. There's something wonderfully wonky about the freshwater pearls. And I pull it into the correct spot. And again, see there's that long stitch around the curve. It's coaxing it into place and the small stitch inside the curve. Longer stitch. Shorter stitch. Long stitches are generally about a quarter of an inch long. Short stitches about an eighth. But there's no hard and fast rule. The real trick is not making long, long stitches inside the curve. Here I've wrapped it around behind, come up through, and you can see when the needle comes up, it comes up in the middle of the soutache or between two pieces of soutache, and it doesn't really matter as long as I go right back down at the exact same place the thread came out. Flip the work over, and we're going to wrap up the soutache in the back. Again, taking three or four whip stitches, you just wrap the thread over, push the needle through, wrap it again, so you have a nice tight collar there. 
from the thread. And trim the soutache. Now we're going to add some surface decoration at the top and bottom joins of the work. I'm going to bring my needle through the back of the work to the front, near the center focal bead, still going through the soutache. And now I'm going to pick up one of the size 15 seed beads, one of the little contrast beads, and another size 15 seed bead. I'm going to stitch across the join. So we call these bridge beads. We're making a little bridge that goes across the join in the soutache. I take one stitch and then come back up again a little bit higher up and stitch only through the middle bead. That kind of pulls the bridge into shape. Kind of curves it around the center bead. I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to use the same detail at the other join. I'm using a 15 and a contrast bead and a 15, but you can use 11s and a 10, you can really do any combination you want. The goal is to add just a little tiny bit more detail on the front. And if you didn't have as much luck closing the join, then this detail will help hide that gap. Now we're going to add jump rings to the back of the work. You're going to need a jump ring at the top and bottom of the work. The thread's coming out the back and I've picked up a jump ring. And if you watch, I'm slowing this down so that you can see I'm sliding the needle really through the back corner of the soutache stack. It's not going all the way through to the front. I'm kind of inserting my needle on a diagonal. And then I just bring the needle through and push it through the jump ring. And I'm going to take that stitch again. So it's really sort of another whip stitch technique. I'm just going through kind of the rear half of the piece of soutache. You don't want that thread to come out to the front. You're kind of keeping it on the back corner. We're going to take three or four whip stitches through this jump ring on the right hand side of the back top. Here we speed it up again, regular speed. And now I've moved to the left side, still just working through that rear corner on a diagonal. I'm going to take three or four whip stitches on the left hand side. What we're doing is really positioning the jump ring. You want about half of it sticking out above the work. You should be able to see negative space through the jump ring and through the work. Flipping it over and working on the bottom now. Same technique, picking up a jump ring and taking a series of whip stitches. To end the work, take several stitches through the back, just through the rough cut areas. Don't get too hung up on making a knot. All that matters is that the thread doesn't come through to the front. Three or four stitches will usually do it. You have to remember there's going to be glue on the back of this, so all of your stitches are going to be made secure with the glue. Now we're going to glue the piece down to the ultra suede backing. Turn the piece over, have your ultra suede ready, and make sure that the wrong side is up. 
put a small blob of glue on the back. You don't want too much because you don't want it to push through the work to the front. I use my finger. Some people use a popsicle stick. A toothpick will work well. What you're really looking to accomplish is to make sure that the glue gets toward the outside edges of the work. I also like to make sure that the frayed ends of the cut soutache have quite a bit of glue on them as well. That'll stop any last little bits of fraying. I wipe the glue right where I'm going to put the piece down. I turn it over and press it down to the ultra suede. This is where I find that the darning needle comes in handy. I use the blunt end to push the beads around, press them into the glue, and I use the sharp end to make any final changes to the alignment of the soutache. Again, really thinking about the curve of the soutache, wanting a nice, smooth, consistent curve. The darning needle gives me that last opportunity to stretch it, pull it, push it into place so that when the glue dries, it's really set. When the glue is dry, it's time to trim it. Use your scissors to trim around the edge of the work. Be very careful not to cut the work. And in fact, leave a scant 30 second of an inch beyond the edge of the work. It doesn't matter if the ultra suede sticks out a little bit beyond the edge of the work. What does matter is over trimming it. It will look very poor from the back if the ultra suede doesn't cover completely the entire back of the soutache. Start the edge beading with a new knotted thread on your needle and bury the knot by driving the needle through one of the beads and out the rib of the outside piece of soutache. Pick up two size 11 seed beads. Push the needle through the rib of the soutache about two beads over from where it came out and it goes right through the back of the work again working on that diagonal so you're going through the rib through the back and then you bring the needle back over and you push it through the first hole of the second bead. Pick up one more bead, go through the rib about one bead over and out the back through the first hole of the last bead one more bead and through the rib again. Repeat this pattern all the way around. Pay attention to the spacing of your beads. If you set them too far apart, you'll have gaps between the beads. If you set them too close together, you'll create a ruffle or a wavy effect to the edge. Pay careful attention when you get to the inside corners of the work. Take your time here and make sure that you're not trying to squeeze in more beads than you truly have room for. As you're working around the jump rings, make sure that the beads stay in front of the jump ring, but make sure that some of the threads come through the jump ring. This will help keep your jump ring in position. It will help secure it. and it will keep the stitches on the back of your work looking nice and even and consistent. The back of the work is just as important as the front of the work. You should have nice small stitches. They will be visible, but I feel that they add to the overall look of the work.
I call this edge beading technique a lay down edge bead. There is a stand up edge beading technique that I'll teach in the next tutorial. It gives you some opportunities for more decoration and makes joining one piece to another a little bit easier. When you finish the edge beading, bury the tail of your thread in the work. Now we're ready to finish it. We're going to be adding an ear wire first. Use your pliers to gently pry open the bottom of the ear wire. Thread the ear wire through the jump ring at the top of the earring. And then use your pliers again gently to close the ear wire loop. You may need to press it. These sometimes require a little bit of manipulation. It depends on the ear wire that you've purchased. I make a lot of my own ear wires. This is a prefabricated ear wire. They can be a little touchy. You're now ready to add the decorative drop. Take your head pin and thread on the focal bead and the size 6 seed bead. Using the flat portion of your looping or rosary pliers, you're going to bend the head pin just above the beads at a 90 degree angle. Use your flush cutters to cut off the excess head pin. Holding the beads firmly, use your looping pliers or your rosary pliers to create a centered loop at the top of the head pin. You can then use your pliers to open the loop, thread the loop onto the bottom jump ring of the earring, and close the loop. And here you have your finished harp earring. This project has been shared with you for your own enjoyment and education as you begin to explore the world of soutache embroidery. I make a living from my craft work, so I ask that you don't mass produce or teach this project. Rather, I encourage you to incorporate these and other techniques into your own unique work.